in advance of that. And I'd uh, like to say that Ronnie O'Sullivan joins us in the studio. Ronnie, well done. You look like you're in good rhythm round there. 37 minutes. Mm. Jig time. What's happening, Jig time? Quickly. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty quick. I got in the balls pretty early, made some good breaks, and, yeah, got, got into a nice little rhythm, you know? Were you feeling good? Uh, feeling all right, yeah. I feel like I'm thinking pretty clear, which is important. So just hopefully the game... Listen, my, my game's never far away from clicking, do you know what I mean? And if I get my head right and the game comes, um, then, you know, it'd be interesting, you know? Looks like it's getting gradually better mm. a little bit, from what I'm seeing. Yeah, I just think sort of like, uh, like, as long as I apply myself, you know, like, form comes and goes, but if you don't apply yourself, your form can be there, but if your frame of mind's not in that winning mentality, then you're, probably, you're just going to keep coming up short. So I've made a conscious effort to try and be a little bit more applying myself in that way, um, which I did last week, and I'm going to try and keep going it forward and then just see what happens, you know? Cool. And what do you do to try and marry all of that with your trying to apply yourself and then obviously your, your, your message, your cueing? What, what, what is you your system? You don't really think about much then. If you're just applying yourself, you just let snooker gods dictate whatever happens. You know, you just keep working hard, you just keep putting the effort in, you just keep focused and you just keep doing all the right things, you know? Experienced enough to know what's wrong from right and then you just keep doing that and eventually, you know... Um, like building a snowman, you get to the end of it and it looks really good. <laughs> I still think that, uh, it, just touching back on, obviously, last week and Jaws and Tong doing wonderful things and whatever, the, the still these guys have got something that, that the, the youngsters maybe don't have, that extra bit of qualities we saw right there. You know, that, that's what it is. It, you know, it's all right being raw and being very, very good and confident and long game working. But, you know, Ronnie and probably John and Mark Selby, you know who I'm talking about, have got that little other thing, that other X factor thing going on for me, you know. Mm. And um, Ronnie, what, what are, are your, your, your expectations <laughs> like um, for, for this week and, and for the season? I know you tell me, you know, you don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not really that bothered if I win or lose, but I'm sure there are a lot of fans that have followed you throughout your career and, and are, are desperate for you to get winning again and lifting a trophy. Yeah, I don't have no expectations really. I just want to play, want to enjoy it, have fun. You know, like I said, you know, it's like a holiday for me. I train twice a day while I'm here, you know, run in the morning, in the gym in the afternoon. Um, just, you know, snooker is a bit of a bonus. Um, you know, obviously I take it seriously. But, um, you know, my li life comes first, you know, and as long as I'm enjoying myself, you know, I don't mind putting a few hours in on the practice table and doing what I've got to do. But otherwise, you know, um, yeah, just just keep just chipping away, in it, Just living life, living a good life. And, and it's just, just to touch on that, you know, I'm, guys like myself are fortunate to get to spend a little bit of time with guys like Ronnie as he's up. You know, I've seen him coming in this morning, blowing a hoolie along the, the problem <laughs> there, and... And he comes from his, his run, and you know it's it's all dedicated stuff. It's mm -hmm. you know it's, it's not easy, to, you know, do that sort of it's not stuff. Not to get up for breakfast, well, exactly, but he's, yeah. he's well ahead no, of us I, on, on all of it, that. Yeah. Um, Ronnie, I'd like to ask you about um, the, the the younger players in the UK because we had Mark Selby in here earlier, and we were just chatting about the, how how good it was that you know the Chinese players broke through with the two of them holding mm -hmm. majors. Do you think that um, we get enough support uh, for snooker in the UK for for young talent? Uh, Obviously not, and I think that's down to the Snooker Association to, 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 to fund that, to do that, to make facilities available. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's who should really maybe invest money in it. But, but like I said, I'll be honest with you, if I had a son, I wouldn't let him play snooker. So I get, you know, um, maybe it's a good thing there isn't <laughs> the opportunity to play snooker rather than play golf, rather than play football, rather than play tennis. Rather than play curling, really. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, no, but you see what I'm saying? There's a, I personally, you know, speaking if I had a child, wouldn't want them to play snooker. I really wouldn't. So, I, I think know. a lot of people will be surprised by that because they'll see well, that, you know, well, you've, I'm, you've I'm had a, a, I'm an honest guy, so yeah, I'll give you my honest opinion. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to go into reasons why, but I'm just saying if I had a, a child or a son, which I have, I would definitely say, don't choose snooker. Maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I first started playing, it was a sexy sport. Um, but it's kind of fell behind somewhat to the other sport. So, like you say, you know, if you had your own child, you'd want them to get into a sport. Like Emma Ranacano, she's doing fantastic, you know, and you look at the golfers, Rory McIlroy, you know, and the footballers, you know, it's, it's just a lovely sport to be in, you know, it's just timing, I suppose, really. Maybe in another 20, 30 years, snooker might be back on top, but at the moment... I'd be like, go and get a job, mate. You know, <laughs> like, forget playing snooker. You know, that's that's my honest opinion. Yeah. You know, I don't. I'm not going to go into reasons why, but you know, you've asked me, so I'm I'm giving you my my thoughts. I wonder, will Zhao Jintong feel the same after? Yeah, to, but you're talking about very one person. You're talking UK about one special person. You know, you can't class with uh, Zhao Jintong. You know, well, you, I'm not talking about the winners. I'm talking yeah. about the guys that are ranked 60, 70 in the world.
younger players that are struggling. Yeah. There's no, there's no. It's not a good. It's not good for them. Mm. You know. So we, you're talking about Joe's in Tong, which is quite unfair. If you if you compare the 125th golfer, what he earns compared to the 125th snooker player, well, he, he makes anything, well. Then they make a million, make a million UK, dollars on yeah. the golf tour. So you know you can afford to miss a few cuts because you're going to make enough money to 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 be able to offset all the all the the losses you might make in a year. Whereas the snooker players. 100 in the world, it's probably costing them 25 grand to be on the tour. That's, that's mm. you know, so it's very difficult to pick one person out or compare it to another sport when really you have to look at it in real terms, you know. I think what Ronnie's also saying, <coughs> when you've been around for, you know, two or three decades, whatever, snooker, as I, I've always said this, snooker can be a good life, but it's a tough life. It's, I think there's one way you could maybe remedy it, is at least give the first round losers their expenses. Yes. Absolutely. At least give them their expenses. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys, they haven't got the money. They come and get beat. Like Michael Giorgio, he's paid me twice now. Yeah. He's got pumped 4 0, 4 0. He's had to pay his own expenses. He ain't earned a dollar. Mm -hmm. It's actually cost him three, 400 quid. It's unfair, really. Like, at least yeah. give the guys the expenses. At least give the, take it off the top. The winners don't really need that extra bit of money. Give it to the first round losers. So at least it ain't cost them anything. Mm -hmm. Let them turn up and, and then you can call it a job. Right. Sorry, took no, over, as no, usual. No, 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 <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Ronnie, thanks so much uh, for coming in. Well done, and uh, we could chat all night. We really could, but we don't have time. Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan, and welcome to Eurosport Snooker on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Snooker.